over to get it, just get it. Ain't just on me, examine. I speak the truth, I'm a realist. I ain't just dedicated, I'm committed. Pull up white polo, T palm, ain't just sweat, VBS, but guess they know our next lockdown. 23 hours, one hour wreck. Look at me now, everything. Boom! My cup over runners. What up, y'all? Welcome to STWF Studios. Monday motivation, slaughter fit in this beep. Today's slaughter fit is flip the switch. I just flipped the switch. Zip, zip. I don't know nobody else that's doing this. When Drake came up that song, I just flipped the switch. I felt that on a different level. Because I really have witnessed people flip a switch. I reached out to my cousin. What up, Craig Walker? Craig Jonathan Walker. Hadn't spoken to him in years. But he did. I watched him flip a switch one time. And it really stood out to me. You know, uh, I'm really into fitness and the working out. Some people get excited about football games. Some people get excited about basketball games. I'm a true trainer in every sense of the word. I get so excited when I see potential realized. I get super excited when I see potential maximized. So my cousin Craig, back in the 90s, we was all kind of low-level living on the cold, kind of working, kind of hustling a little bit. We was out there in the Wicked City, and we wasn't really doing much. My grandmother, she was just glad to have some company around the house. She didn't really require much. You know, so my cousin Craig, like us, he was doing the bare minimum in his health, in his life. Craig, one of those kind of lean dudes, you know, not really big, but you can see, yeah, he kind of had the six pack, you know, just kind of a little cut dude, but not really that impressive because he wasn't doing nothing with it. My brother, best physique in the family. He just overall packed, broad shoulder, small waist, big biceps. I mean, people literally thought he was on Roy's. My brother, just excellent genetics. Me and Craig and other walkers, we all have something. Mine was the legs. I could always squat more than everybody. Craig had the most hard body, but he wasn't really doing nothing with it. So Craig, all of a sudden, just, just flipped the switch. Man, we, know, we started noticing him just getting muscular as hell, getting strong, women complimenting him. Dudes, man, what are you doing? And Craig had just got tired of BSing, and he said, back then, this was a true statement. It's not a true statement today. He was like, eggs don't cost nothing. You can get like a, back then, you can get like a dozen a dozen eggs for like 78 cents. So Craig was like, I ain't got no excuses. Even though I ain't got a lot of money, eggs, that's protein. Rice don't cost ish. Tuna fish don't cost nothing. So my cousin Craig, naturally lean as it is, went on a boiled egg, eating egg whites, tuna fish, and rice. And when I tell you that man flipped the switch, he had tunnel vision. The only thing he was focused on was eating his meals and training. He, he stopped the party, and he, he wasn't a big party like us anyway, but he had just blocked out everything, and this man looked like a brand new individual. Like people was tripping out. I took him up to World's Gym where I was training that back when I was bodybuilding. I did a couple of natural shows. Back when I was bodybuilding, there was this one dude, he had won the last show I was at. And I looked at this dude like, yeah, I kind of look up to him in a bodybuilding sense. Like, he know, he know what he's doing. He seen my cousin Craig, and he was like, you the one who need to be competing. And I was thinking, damn, I've been trying to be a bodybuilder for years. My cousin flipped the switch, started eating nothing but eggs, rice, and tuna, and he got jacked. So when I say flip a switch, it could be equivalent to a dope fiend hitting his bottom, or an addict, I should say, hitting their bottom and saying, enough is enough. I'm going to get my life back. Then I'm going to get my wife back and my kids back. And my, you know, when you see somebody flip a switch, it is a, more, it is a very, very powerful, inspiring thing. T.D. Jake said, there's nothing more powerful than a change mind. My brother fell heavy, heavy, heavy into alcohol. Um, alcohol addiction. He fell very heavy into it. So my brother started this thing. I just want to see if I can go one week without drinking. When he first started, I think he made it three or four days, broke down and had a drink. Then he tried it again and he made it. I'm going to try to go one month without drinking, my brother would say. 
I think the first time he made it a week and a half, broke down and drank. Second time, he might have made it two weeks. He tried it again. He made it the whole month. My brother kept doing that, running forward, boom, getting back up and kept running forward. My brother finally got to the time where he blew our mind. He went six months without a drip, without a drop. He, he used to fail at one week. He used to fail at one month. He went six months on his own, just got tired of being a, a clown, just wasting his life. So he did this on his own. The last time I talked to him, he had went two years. He used to fail at one week, and eventually he built up the strength and the willpower to go over two years without touching something he loves, alcohol. That's what I call flipping the switch. When people think they know you, they think they got you down, they think you quitting, they know that you ain't going to never be nothing, they, they just count you out, and you just bam, flip that switch. When someone has flipped the switch, they're going to walk a little different. They're going to talk a little different if they're talking at all. A lot of times they just get quiet. Their eyes. And before a dog turn on you or this and that, when an animal finna rip you apart, you can always tell the eyes. I've had people take, uh, I've witnessed stories, talked to dog trainers, known people that uh, train exotic animals. And any time before the animal back to what it was supposed to do, ripping their ass apart, that the eyes switched. They said, I knew I was going to get attacked when I saw the look in his eyes. Flipping a switch is something that you don't hear it. You don't quite see it physically. You can tell something has changed. But boy, you can feel it. I, re I recall when we had uh, moved to Vegas from Oak Cliff. I've told a story before, but this, this is my, my true introduction into real working out. We had moved to Vegas. I had left Oak Cliff when I was like 11. Moved to Vegas. And so two years has passed. Now I'm 14. If y'all haven't noticed, a lot of teenagers, right around 13, 14, they go through that tubby phase. They might grow up to be tall and lean. They might grow up to be muscular. But a lot of people around 13 or 14, puberty hits in and boom, they gain weight real easy. So I'm around people telling me, man, you got to eat to grow. You got to eat to build muscle. I'm reading it in books. This dude, uh, this brother outside with a shirt off, eating chili and cheese nachos. You, know, you got to eat to grow. And I'm like, damn, this dude tearing them nachos up. I'm like, shit, eat? Cool. I love that. Lo and behold, back then, it wasn't really focused on what you ate as much. It was just people just told me to eat. I'm eating cornflakes lo corn loaded with sugar and stuff like that. I end up getting fat. We go back to Oak Cliff for a family reunion. I told this story before. Two weeks in a row, I walk in the room, people just bust out laughing when they see me. Literally, I walk in the kitchen, somebody filling my brother's biceps because they was amazing. They wasn't trying to rub it in my face. My brother just always had his biceps to this day blow my mind. So he would make a muscle and people would just like, it was a rock on top of a rock. And his arms was just lean cut and ginormous, all natural, just a beast. So I'm getting laughed at every time I walk in the room. Every time I walk in the room, I see somebody filling on my brother's arm, asking him, man, let me see that again. Come look at this dude's arm. Hi, Rock, you just don't look right, fat man. I'm sorry, man. You look, ah, you look, you look, man, you look funny, bro. I left this athletic kid and came back this chubby teenager. I got teased, teased, teased. The two week family reunion thing was over with. Left Oak Cliff, went back to Vegas. Told the story a million times. Hopefully, I'll tell, you, tell it a million more. When that plane landed at two o'clock in Vegas, about 107 degrees of that desert heat, quick trip from the airport to the apartment. Boy, I got out them clothes, put on this red sweat, had this uh, top that was red and blue. Put that top on. Boom. Lifted weights. Bam, bam, bam. Went outside, jogging in that heat about a mile and a half. Came back in, lifted some more. I did that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I think I took the weekends off. And I remember it was just these two high school girls. I was just in eighth grade. They were um, older, one redhead, one Asian. They was gorgeous. They had bodies. Everybody liked them. 
Remember when I first started jogging the redhead or the Asian, I forget which one. How I look at this little short, fat self trying to work out, they was clowning me, laughing at me. I had just left Oak Cliff with my family, laughing every time I walked in a room because they was not used to me being, face was all fat, legs, knees bending in, like they wasn't used to it. They was literally laughing. Get back to Vegas to work out, the hottest chicks in the neighborhood clowning me. This, these were the popular chicks all the dudes like. No joke, about 10, 11, 12 months later, I remember the redhead, Lisa, come here, girl, you got to see this. Rod done built himself a body, girl, you got to. They, they went from laughing at me to praising me. I flipped the switch, that switch got flipped. I was working out before I left Oak Cliff. In Vegas, I was still working out. But I was eating a whole bunch of bad stuff. Man, and I turned that switch on, and at 14 years old, people was like, wow. When we did eventually, against my wishes, move from Nevada back to Dallas, it was a whole different story. My mother's friend stopping by the house, man, that boy can't be 14. Damn, he looked like an NFL running back. I was getting praise, I was getting compliments, so it was easy for me to stick to working out I was already doing it before I got chubby, but once I got chubby and I got body shamed and I had people looking at me a certain way, once I was able to really take control and flip that switch and lock the F in, man, I have not looked back since two o'clock in Vegas in about 1984 when the plane landed. I have not looked back since, have never missed a week of working out no matter what. And I still look like crap up and down throughout the years because of nutrition, especially when I was in my early 20s on them 40 ounces, eating uh, uh, church's chicken and stuff like that. So I, I have gotten, I've just recently uh, gotten kind of out of shape, but I've been dialing it back in. So it's an ongoing process. I want to give another example of flipping the switch when I had got older in my 20s. I moved down to Dickinson, Texas, which we call a wicked city. Um, rap had just really, three or four years ago, really switched to the gangster stuff. So I was determined to live like my people was living down there, selling dope, selling weed, drinking 40 ounces. Just, you know, I've been working, I've been responsible somewhat. When I get down here, I'm gonna let my, I'm, a, I'm just gonna let my, I'm gonna let them hang, let my hair down. Back then, I literally had a ponytail with a perm. Thought I was pimping or something. So I get down there, every day I'm smoking. When I first got down, I didn't smoke. Hanging around my cousin who was heavy in the game, he would just sell crack cocaine and smoke his J's. And I was hanging with him, so he eventually started passing to me and up shit. I ended up with a habit. So I got to the point where I'm smoking every day. Ice Cube, all the rappers have 40 ounces. It almost went out of my way to make sure every morning 9, 10 a.m., the little Asian store around the corner, right outside of Pine Forest, for those people in the Wicked City, I know what I'm talking about. I would walk outside of Pine Forest, walk like 20, 30 feet, go to the Asian store and get a 40 ounce. And that was my every day. The rappers talking about it, every song I hear talking about it, starting my day with a 40 ounce. This little young dude saw me, he was like, man, you, you have a 40 ounce every day. And I remember thinking, yeah, that's I'm, I, that's what I'm doing. I'm, you know. And anyway, so I'm smoking, drinking every day. My mother uh, hadn't seen me in about, let's say, three or four months past. My cousin break me off an elbow, which is a pound. So I'm down there selling some uh, grass, just grass, y'all, YouTube people. So I'm down there selling some grass clippings from people on, and uh, not working. My mother maybe hadn't seen me three, four, five months. She saw me. Oh, she walked in my sister's apartment and she like, whoo, had the whole apartment smelling like that sticky icky. And mama used to smoke, but she not used to me smoke. So she's like, whoo, and I'm like, damn, now mama, mama know I smoke. She know it ain't Michelle. And my mother looked at me and she was like, dang, son, when you, when you left, you was all buff and in shape. Man, look at you. Like, man, son, what are you doing with yourself? Bam, that switch. When mama said, damn, son, look at you, 
you you left in shape and now you look like crap pretty much. Pop. That flipped that switch. Stop all that selling little grass and all that. Stop that. Went and got a job that was so hard. Every one of my homeboys and family members have tried to do it. Boy, you crazy. This job is for Mexicans. You crazy. How can you do that? We retread these big old 18 wheeler tires, 100 and some degrees in Houston humidity. We got to go off in these chambers that's real hot and pull them out, sweating all day. You got to pull these real tight rubber things over and off of them. Had the tips of my fingers like the skin ripping off of them. I did. First of all, I started working and stopped hustling. Then got a membership at World's Gym. And we can see that people was like, oh, we scared of you. A gym membership? That was foreign to them. They was looking at me like, man, I was high class. Man, they like, man, you in the house of did it. Well, you look at you, you got a membership to a health club. I'm like, man, I always had a membership to a gym. That ain't nothing. But what transpired, I became a ghost. Quit hanging out all the time was going to work by 6 a.m., getting off around 6 in the evening, dog tired, people wasn't seeing me no more. Went and got that gym membership at World Gym, bop. Boy, people seen me, laid low for about three, four months. They had a spot called Diamonds or Glows that, that would switch names. So went up to Glows one night, White T on, had been killing the game. Been eating right, been sweating at that sweatshop, and been hitting the gym five days a week. Men and women just, boy, man, they used to call me rebelling because I had the song, they didn't know what I was saying. I was saying rebel. It's the rebel and ruthless rock, rock the rebel, something, something, something. I forgot the verse now. So they would call me rebelling because they, they didn't know what I was saying. Oh, rebel and swole, rebel and swole. And the accolades, the respect, the man, how you, man, bro, put me on a program, bro. Man, how did you do that? That's what flipping the switch is. My homie Anthony Marcus from Hip Hop Gangsters, what up? Him and his brother, they was living in the hood, Dalworth. They was very uninspired, not really doing much besides Big Ant was crying here and there. His little bro, his brother, older brother, Ronald, just was just really not doing much with his life. When Big Ant's mother died, some, uh, his, his, both of them died. Ron, may you rest in peace, and his mother, Miss Marcus, may you rest in peace. Both of them died, Ant flipped the switch. Nobody saw This dude started driving trucks, driving from here to New York, going, you know, driving over the road as a trucker, making big bread. Him and his old lady split up still, taking care of his kids. One of their car break down, bam. Need their rent paid, bam. I lose my spot, I got you. Like nobody saw him coming up and stacking his bread the way he did. When you flip a switch, it could be going from broke to balling. It could be, it could be from going from fat to fit. Or it could be just you not no longer putting up with people's shit. You know, um, Big Ant made a complete, unfortunately, he flipped the switch in two ways. One of his homies got out of prison. And this dude was just, back then, I didn't even know this. This was a secret to me, believe it or not. I was strictly weightlifting, into the weightlift. I did not know what push-ups could do back then. I really didn't. And I still say it can't do it for everybody. You got to hit them real intense. But this dude had got out the pen, and he just looked damn near like Tookie Williams. And Big Ant was like, golly, how you get like that? And the dude challenged him. He said, I'm going to tell you, but you're not going to be able to do it. He said, you won't be able to do it. He said, man, just tell me. He said, man, push-ups. He said, what push-ups? He said, all day long, whenever you think about it, just get them. He said, man, I was off in there doing push-ups all day long, bro. You would, you would not be able to get on my program. Big Ant said he just started doing push-ups. Every time he thought about it, he'll break down and do push-ups. We saw Big Ant, and he went from just a regular-looking dude to looking like a swole-ass Evander Holyfield and everybody tripped out. And, you know, I was known as a muscle dude, so he couldn't wait for me to say, what's up, what you think? I'm like, damn, big ass, man, what you been doing? He said, man, them push-ups. And I'm like, push-ups? You got to hit weights to look like that. He must be. Anyway, once his family died, his, mo his mother and brother died, and he started driving trucks. 
He started balling financially, but he got butterball fat. Man, truck drivers, it's, it's, it's a hard occupation to stay in shape. As far as him manning up and getting on his grown man, nobody's seen it coming. Dude making buku bread, taking care of his kids, grown kids. When they get in trouble, he got it. His wife, ex-wife needs something, he got it. Vehicle breakdown, he got it. But he got super overweight and he's still been trying to get that off. So stick with that. I mean, he's been on his mission. I've been talking to him. Stick with it, big man. But he's been carrying that weight around for like 12, 14, 15 years, if not longer. So sometimes flipping a switch financially can affect you physically only if you allow it to. I seen a truck driver outside of Dollar General the other day. Dude looked like Terrell Owens. Dude, while he waiting for them people, he out there working out outside his truck. So it, 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 you don't have to get out of shape when you drive trucks or sit down all day. Most people get in extremely poor health if they're driving all day or sitting, sitting around all day. But you can flip that switch. It don't have to be like that. So when I say flip that switch, y'all, lock the F in. Literally see a switch in your mind that says own, says beast mode. Say slaughter time. Whatever it takes, find that switch in your head, flip that switch, lock in. It's time to win. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Slaughter Fit right here at STWF Studios. We are out. See you all tomorrow for Hot Topic Tuesday. Arr!